During the rapture, Mike, Jesus will not uh, will not land on the earth. Okay. No? It is us touch up in the air. Okay. Sige. Uh, pero I want something that uh, Sarina kasi is asking dito. I want something that is kumbaga satisfying yung answer. Satisfying. So, ah. no, ano, give, give yung, me yung, a, a whole picture. Uh, yung mga okay. dead will rise first. Refers to the body. The soul in the paradise will be connected with the body. Okay. Okay. At yung si Ruby, tumatawag siya kay technician Danny. <laughs> And we are we are caught up with the Lord in the air. Okay, all right. That, that's true. That's true. Okay, let's go, go here. from there. Then let's go. First Thessalonians chapter four. That's the main text for the rapture. First, let us go to the context. What is the context? Um, what is the context of the? Reason why they were asking or why Paul answered the rapture. Okay. Is that big enough? Excuse me. First Thessalonians 4. That, that, that thing about Thessalonians 4, um, the issue is there were already believers who are who have died. Marami nang namamatay. Mm-hmm. Because mm. they heard that the Lord Jesus said that I will come back. And, and so their concern was, Naku, hindi po bumabalik si Lord. Marami na sa ating namamatay. Paano na yun? Um, uh, mm. You know, they are concerned. The church in Thessalonica, Thessalonica was concerned that their brothers in the Lord will be missing out the return of Jesus. Mm. That is the concern. So, Yung mga namatay. O oh, yung mga namatay na. Oh. So, that's why Paul writes them. Brothers and sisters. So mm. this is definitely for the believers. Okay? Kasi it's not for everybody. It's for the believers. Brothers and sisters. We do not want you to be uninformed. Let's start there. Paul says, we do not want you to be... Hold on. Okay. We do not want you to be uninformed. So in other words, it's very possible for believers, for Christians, to be uninformed. And that is very true with Christians today. There are many Christians that are very much uninformed uh, of doctrines. And if you're uninformed of doctrines, the result is always worry. The result is always... Anxious. Worry. I don't know word for worry. Um, anxious. Anxious, concerned if you are uninformed. So what is the concern of being uh, uninformed? About those who sleep. What kind of sleep? In death. death. So he's not just talking about sleeping. By the way, see, Paul loves to use the word sleep uh, in all his writings. He uses the word sleep instead of death uh, mm-hmm. because for him, no, you, you really do not die. It's just, you know, yeah. but anyway, Totolo. who sleep in death. So do not worry. I don't want to be uninformed. Why are you not supposed to be worried? So that, okay, at on purpose, you have to understand okay. this. When Christians die, I don't want you to be uninformed para so that you okay. do not grieve like the rest of mankind. So he is not saying you, you should not grieve. Of course you should grieve. Na wala yung mm-hmm. love one mo, na wala <clears throat> yung sawa mo, na wala yung anak mo. Of course you should grieve. But you do not grieve like the rest of mankind. Who's the rest of mankind? Those who are the Lord. Those who do not have a relationship with Jesus. Do not grieve like them. Why? What about them? Who have no hope? People of the world when they see a person who dies, uh, they will always say verbally, ah, he's in a better place, he is at peace, and so mm-hmm. on. But deep down inside of them, their attitude, parang wala na, he's gone, the end. But that is not what is supposed to be for Christians. So, why should, why should we not grieve like them? 
for, uh, you see, you always watch this word, for, F-O-R, because, dahil, etong reason, why you should not grieve like the rest of the world. Why? For, we believe that Jesus died, and then not just that, he didn't just die, this is what gives you hope, and rose again. So, yeah, we give a new spirit. So, yeah, the whole point is this. Your brothers and sisters who have died ahead of you, who are in Christ, yes, they have died. They are sleeping. But like Jesus, our master, he will rise again. No question. What part of that person will rise again? Because obviously our spirit never dies. I mean, we are always alive, right? So what, what, what rise again? He continues. And so, that is... Because our master have risen from the dead. And so, that's the reason why we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So, ano ang, ang reasoning? Because our master died and he rose from the dead. Therefore, those who have died, our brothers and sisters in Christ, we, we have the hope that they too will rise again just like Jesus. Next verse is how. How are they going to rise again from the dead? Verse 15. According to the Lord's own words. So the, the next few teachings are not the teachings of the Apostle Paul. It is not the teaching of some prophet. It is the teaching of Jesus himself. That is the reason why according to the Lord's word. Siya mismo ang nagturo. That Jesus is has taught us while he was here on earth. So what did he teach? We tell you that we who are still alive, okay? So hindi yung mga namatay, tayo mga buhay pa, we who are left until the coming of the Lord. So here's what it is. There is a group of people, hopefully our generation, who are still alive today, who will be seeing the coming of the Lord, the return of the Lord. Now, do we know exactly that it is our time? No, we do not. Yeah. Apostle Paul and the first century church, they thought that it was going to be at their time. They were hoping it to be at their time, but obviously it wasn't. So let's continue. We, who are still alive, will certainly not proceed those who have fallen asleep. Oh, hindi pa kompleto yung sentence. Hindi tayo mauuna sa kanila. Mauuna sa ano? But just understand, we will not go ahead of them. In what? Verse 16. How will it happen muna? For the Lord himself will come down. Okay? Hmm. From heaven. Remember in John, he was speaking and said, you know, I am the bread of life who came down from heaven and then I will return back to the Father in heaven. So he's back in heaven. But the day will come that he will come down from heaven with a loud command. I don't know exactly how it's going to be. Is it audibly when he will uh, will have a loud command? I have no idea. But with a loud command. Trumpet. trumpet. There will be a loud sound of the trumpet. Yeah. But there's a separate because with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel. So it's the voice of the archangel <clears throat> that is loud. And with, so on top of the trumpet, there's the, 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 the voice of the angel and the trumpet call of God. Now, could this be literal that there's a, tot, 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 tot? I have no idea. Mm. The whole point is that there will be a call and the call is only to be responded by those who are in Christ. And here you go. This is where we will not proceed. This is where we will not go ahead of them. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So, this is now where you will say the rapture. Hmm. Those who are dead, who are those dead? Everybody from the Old Testament until today, until the time when the Lord returns, they who are dead in Christ will rise first. 17. Those who are believers. Believers, those who are in Christ. Yeah. Uh -uh. After that, Oh, no, yeah. ano after, that? after those who are dead, yung nauna sa atin, mm. the Thessalonian church were worried na naku, patay na sila. No? Mm. Sila ang mauna. 
after that, I like this one. We who are still alive, you know, even see Paul at that time, he was already expecting that even in their lifetime, now that the Lord will return. So we who are still alive, so and are left. Okay, mga naiwan. Here you go. Here's the word rapture. Will be caught, caught up. up. That is the word rapture. In the Latin Bible, uh, that word caught up is rapturos. And um, it, in English, uh, ngayon, it's called caught up. There is no word rapture. But that is exactly what it means. The caught up, being pulled out. So we are going to be caught up together with them. Who's the them? Those who have died ahead of us. So I'll tell you the question. Where are we going to go? In. Clouds. That's where it is. The clouds. The clouds. So, the we, 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 come back, we come back down. Diba babalik tayo dito for the millennial kingdom? That, 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 that's different. That, that is where, this is now I'm trying to explain to you. The rapture is different than the second coming. The rapture is when the Christians are taken out of this world. The mm. second coming is when the Lord returns and actually touch down on earth. We, we will get there. So, rapture muna tayo. Mm. The rapture is when the church, the dead in Christ first, then we who are still alive, will be raptured, will be taken up, will be caught up in. That, that's where? The clouds. So, that is where you do this so on. We're in an instant, boom, nawala. And so called, um, they said, you know, millions of people are gone. But I will argue on that. Um, I don't think it's millions. <laughs> I think it's much less than that. Anyway, we'll be caught up in the clouds. What are we going to do there? To meet the Lord. So we are the ones who is going to meet him, the clouds, where again? In the air. So he substitutes the word clouds in the air. So somehow in the atmosphere, he will meet us halfway. Or mm. you know, he'll come down from heaven and take us out of this mm. world and we will be with him. So, and so... From that time on, we will be with the Lord forever. Now, why did Paul explain this? Because the church in Thessalonica was worried that brothers and sisters have died. Wala na sila, hindi po bubabalik si Lord. So Paul reminds them of the teaching of the Lord himself. So, Mike, storboin lang kita. Uh, so we will be caught up in the air with Christ. Sabi mo for ever. So when will we be separated when people are going to be judged? That's a different time also. Pagal, pagal the pa final nun. judgment. Pagal pa nun. Pagal pa. Okay, let, let's go this. Slowly tayo, slowly, okay? So anyway, rapture muna tayo. So therefore... Ito, ko confused na ako. Dami ko kasing binabasa. Okay, so therefore... You, you should know the rapture so that, therefore, encourage. So the purpose of knowing the rapture is to be encouraged that one day, you and I, we are dying, okay? Physically, all of us, no exceptions. If the Lord doesn't return yet, we are going to die. And if somebody else in our family, our loved ones, our friends who are in Christ, who have died ahead of us, Paul is saying here, why are you so worried? Mm. Number one, they really have not died. He uses the word sleep. Sleep. Pag, pag natulog ba mo, are you worried? Actually, you're happy. Wait, nagpapahinga siya. You're, they're just mm. asleep. So therefore, encourage one another with these words. Okay, with. In other words, with this topic, with this doctrine, with this mm. teaching, you encourage each other with these words Especially if you're in a group of um, believers as a funeral. Ooh, I love to use these verses. Because a lot of Christians, as Paul have mentioned here, sa, sa una -una, um, they are, here's the key word, 
a lot of Christians are uninformed. And if they are, they have a little knowledge of, of the rapture and the return of the Lord, very shallow. Really worry. Very shallow. And the result is worry. The result mm. is um, concern. Mm. But he said, no, no, you should know. So anyway, this is the rapture. So on question of the, what will happen next? So when we meet the Lord in the air, we are taken up to be with the Lord forever. We are in heaven. Um, that will be the seven-year um, time of tribulation. Tribulation. Here so the Christians are not on the earth anymore. So you could imagine the chaos that would happen in this world. That is why the beast, the 666, the, um, uh, the fullness of the, uh, the work of evil will happen in this world. Imagine more, there are no Christians present in this world. Ngayon nga may Christians pala who is the salt and the light of the earth. This is now what is going on in this world. When the Christians are taken out, the Holy Spirit technically, quote unquote, is taken out of this world. There is full blast of the work of the evil one on this earth. That is for seven years. Then uh, on the end of seven years, the Lord will return the actual touchdown at the Mount of Olives in Israel together with the saints. Who are the saints? Those who have been caught the up. Givers. Those who have been uh, with the Lord. So we are going to come back in Jerusalem, in uh, Mount of Olives, and the Lord himself will destroy his enemies. Because at that point, uh, the nations of the world is going to go against Israel. The Lord will destroy his enemies and will establish his kingdom from Jerusalem. He is now, okay, here's the word now, the beginning of the millennium. Millennium, you will not find the word millennium in the Bible, but the word millennium refers to mil is 1,000. So the millennium reign of Christ, 1,000 year reign of Christ. That is where the world experience the perfect government, use the term. It's going to be a perfect government for a thousand years. At the end of the 1,000 years is the end, at the end of 1,000 years, is the destruction of the heavens and the earth. There will be a, uh, the, the, there will be a new heavens and a new earth and the final judgment to where the goats and the sheep are separated, those who are not in Christ will be permanently locked up in hell for eternity. That is where Matthew 7 also will happen. That there are those who will say, but Lord, Lord, bakit ako pupunta ng imperno? Have I not prophesied? Have I not been this and that? And the Lord will say, I never knew you. Away from me, you mm. didn't do her. So that is when officially, Eternity begins. So that's the picture. Okay? Claro ba yun? Malabo pa rin. Say, are you still there? Hmm. Ano wala? Mike, Mike. Hmm. Yung mga unbelievers during the 1,000 years, they still have the chance to repent, right? Para makasama sa... Yeah, every men. person who have not yet died, okay, who have not yet died, even mm. if you live in the tribulation time, and by the way, sa seven-year tribulation is the greatest harvest. A lot of people will come to know the Lord, but the, the book of Revelation says that if you come to know the Lord in the time of tribulation, they are beheaded. They are beheaded. Uh, so, um, again, yes, you can still become a believer at the time of tribulation, but it's going to be very difficult. At the time of millennium, yes. At ang beauty na tong millennium, by the way, and I'm very excited about the millennium, because at that time, you and I already have glorified bodies. Okay? If we have died or if we have been raptured, so therefore we are given glorified bodies, right? So when we return here on earth for a thousand years, there are people with normal physical bodies and you and I have glorified bodies. <clears throat> Imagine that. Wow. I mean, 
If you have not traveled the world like Ira did, okay? She traveled the whole world. When you and her, <clears throat> I have the glorified body, magsawa pa sa travel. Not just on this old earth, but in the universe. Um, because you can travel from one point to another at any given moment. You can eat all the kinds of food with full of cholesterol and don't have to worry about those things. Uh, you do not have the, you know, the, the arthritis and so on and so forth. So it is That's my question. Mm -mm. Question: When you say we have our glorified bodies, is it the physical body that we still have? It's just perfect, or it's correct. a spirit invisible? Na tayo. No, no. no. We have physical bodies. Okay, let me connect that. So everyone remember, First Thessalonians four. Take note of that. Is the rapture? First Thessalonians four, starting with verse thirteen. For the bodies, you have to go to 1 Corinthians 15. 15. Mm -hmm. 15. Yeah. You can, you can read the whole chapter, but let me just go to a, a portions. Okay. Now, at the verse 70, Paul. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you. Okay. So, the whole purpose is about reminding because teachings can easily be forgotten. And like you and I, you know, we need to be reminded of doctrines. We need to be reminded of the teachings. So Paul is saying, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preach to you, which you receive and in which you have taken your stand. This is what you believe. You have taken your stand. So let me go to the portion of the gospel that speaks about the resurrection. There you go. The resurrection of the dead. Verse 12. Even if spiritual Christ has been raised from the dead. So it has been preached. Ito ang tinuro ko sa ni Paul. Christ had been raised from the dead. He did not stay. His body did not stay dead. He was raised from the dead. How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? I mean, it's very ironic. How come that there are some of you supposedly believers in Corinth do not believe in the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, but there are some people who do not, who do not believe that. Uh, uh, argument with Paul. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. I mean, if you do not believe in resurrection, then our Lord did not resurrect. Continues his argument. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless because our preaching, the gospel, is the hope of our resurrection. That's the whole point. We do not stay dead. No, we resurrect from the dead. And if... I does not answer my question. Ang question ko lang, yung katawan, ba, oh, yung katawan ba natin, is it uh, a spirit yeah. or it's we flesh? Chapter 15 will answer your question. I just want to give the whole context. Remember, okay. when you answer things, it always has to be in the whole context. Okay? So anyway, we will get there. So what's the question? What, what's the point? And so is your faith. Will be futile, will be useless if you do not believe in resurrection. So again, let's go further. And I encourage you, read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. I'll just go highlight some things. Okay, some things. Um, okay. But if he did not raise... Him, if in fact the dead are not raised. The whole point, the dead will be raised. Let me go further. So when Christ has been raised, okay, verse 19. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But can he raised from the dead? The first put, da, da, da. Adam will die first, then the end will come, then the answer, let me just jump. The last of the enemy will be decided first, put in that, okay. Let me go to the okay. Let me jump. Oh, there you go. Let's that's 36. The resurrection of here you got it. Here's your question What happens to the body, not the spirit? The body, okay. So, but someone will ask, How are the dead? In the context, what is the what is the dead? Their dead body. 
how are the dead body raised? Okay, that's the context, not the spirit. The spirit never dies. The body dies. So how are the bodies raised? Here you go. Here's the question. Here's your question. Ate. Same exact question. With what kind? Diba that's your question? Oh, body. What kind? That is your question. What kind of body will they come? So I'm not the one giving you the answer. Apostle Paul is the one giving you the answer. And Apostle Paul says, I'm reminding you of what Jesus has taught us. So this is the answer of Jesus. What kind of body? How foolish. What you sow, anong tinanim mo, does not come to life un unless it dies. So this body have to die first. Then what happens? When you sow, do not plant the same yes. body. Well, here you go. Do not. Not the same. Not the same kind of body. Do not plant the same body that will be. But just as a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. So it is not the same body. Because if you plant a seed, ang itsura niya siguro bilog yung seed. Pag tinanin mo, ang labas niya puno. It's not the same. It's just a illustration. But God, here you go, gives it a body. What kind of body? As he has determined. So ang question ngayon is, how does it look like? I have no idea. But it is kind of a body different than the one we have that is determined by God. So the illustration. Siya lang nakakaalam. But we will have an idea. We will have an idea. To each kind of seed, he gives his own body. So the Lord is the one determining that. Let's continue. Verse 39. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh. Animals have another. Birds another. And fish another. So again, just a comparison. Um, iba ibang klase. There are also, here you go, heavenly bodies. And there are earthly bodies. So, here's the first comparison. The one you and I that are in right now, this the Greek word is sarki, this body is an earthly body. What are the characteristics of an earthly body? Number one, it is deteriorating. It is dying. It's getting older. Number two, it is subject to all kinds of sicknesses. Number yeah. three, it has to be fueled by food. If you don't eat, mm -hmm. you die. If you don't drink, you die. Uh, it is uh, subject to all the elements of uh, you know this world. Kay mga hangin ba or kay mga init ba ng araw, it is subject to all of those things. Heavenly body, as we will see in other texts, is for eternity. So in that sense alone, it is very different than this earthly body. Because the heavenly bodies will not deteriorate, is not subject to the elements of this world, will not yeah. need uh, food for fuel to keep it surviving, does not need food, does not need drink, does not need any of those kinds of things. It does not need vitamins, it does not need exercise. Mm -hmm. It is created according to God to live in heaven for eternity. So when it says about it is a different kind of body. It is not necessarily saying that it's a different look, but rather a different characteristic. Because uh, right now I'm explaining to you, the mere fact that it will never die, it is very different from this specific body. Now let me go further. When Christ was resurrected and he had his glorified body, his disciples still recognized him. Okay, For a while, they did not recognize him. But then later on, oh, you are our Lord. So that kind of body is still recognizable. They still know it's Christ. They were still able to touch him. Jesus said, okay, if you don't believe me, uh, Thomas, here's my hand. Here's the hole in my hand. And, uh, you know, touch it and you know that I am. And then the, the, the disciples were inside, uh, inside the room. They were locked inside the room. And then it says, suddenly, Jesus was in their midst. So somehow that kind of body can be transported and can pass through walls. Yeah, so parang spirito na rin. 
you cannot say spirit because he had the physical body that they can touch. So again, you cannot say parang because it's the kind of body that is meant for eternity. So you, you, your mind cannot even comprehend how, how it is because it can eat. Spirits and ghosts, so-called, do not eat. Jesus ate with his disciples after his resurrection. He was actually even the one who prepared their breakfast. Okay? Uh, grilled tilapia. Remember when, when they were fishing and when they came back, Jesus prepared food and he ate with them. So, kumain pa rin siya. He had a physical body. He ate with them. So, let's continue. Heavenly bodies, earthly bodies. Etong gusto ko. I love this. But, ah, okay, there are some similarities because it's called, it's still called the body, but the splendor. Oh, what's, what's the word splendor? The beauty, the excellence, the, the different nice thing, the splendor of, there you go, nang, of the heavenly bodies is one kind. It's different. So what, what Paul was saying, stop thinking about the comparison of your earthly bodies and the heavenly bodies. Because malayo. <laughs> malayo. Malayo. It, again, earlier, he was speaking about the bodies of fish, of animals, and of flesh. Could you even compare yourself, your body, with the, with the body of the fish? Monkey? I mean... It's malayo. Okay. Um, and then he will compare. The sun has one kind of splendor. The moon, another. The stars, another. The stars are different from star to star. Okay. Maka iba. So, so, okay. Kaya, kaya, the same thing, if it's different, will it be with the resurrection of the dead? Their bodies are different. Ito na yung, ano, what's the difference? <clears throat> Here you go. The body that is sown, our physical earthly body, here's the first thing, is perishable. Ano yung perishable? Nabubulok. Kayo na, okay. kayo na na. Especially mga ladies, you are very close. Yung beauty nyo, yung mga, yung mga wrinkles, wrinkles nyo. Okay? Kaya, kaya makeup is a multi-million dollar business. Because people are concerned about their perishing bodies. Okay? Uh, the Irish, nakasalamin dito. Bakit? Yung mata niya, Tandana. perishing. Okay? Here's the beauty. That's the earthly body. What about the heavenly body? It will be raised, what's the word? Imperishable. Hindi nabubulok. Bulok. Hindi tanda. Decay. Decayed. Hindi nagdi-decay. Now. Eternally here, fresh. <laughs> aha, here is another thing that we cannot picture. It is sown, the earthly body, in dishonor. What do you mean by dishonor? Now, your imagination is the same as my... I, I don't know. Dishonor in the sense na, again... Uh, as you grow older, mag-aano ka na, ano tayo, mag magbabaston ka na, uh, kailangan mo na ng tulong ng ibang tao, uh, you can no longer stand on your own, hindi ka na pwede magpupo mag-isa, okay? kaya meron mga nursing homes, meron na, you know, kahit anong title mo ngayon, you are the manager of so-and-so, you are the president of so-and-so. As you grow older, your spirit might feel you are still, you know, you're, you're smart and everything, but your body is this will be dishonored. Lumalakad ka, umuutot ka, nang hindi mo kinokontrol. Oh, di ba? Sabi mo, eh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Bakit? Iihi pa. Iihi pa, kaya meron mga adult diaper. Diaper. You know mo, dati kang presidente, dati kang manager, dati kang you know, highly respected. Ngayon, ganyan ka. This body is perishing. It is sown in dishonor. Now, here's the beauty. The comparison with the glorified body, it is raised in glory. Now, he did not explain what it means in glory. For sure, it is something 
you cannot even imagine because we have no idea what the Lord ano ginawa niya. I have no idea. Then, another comparison, the Bible that we have today, it is sown in weakness. Akala ba si Samson malakas? Akala ba yung mga nagbabody building? Wow, ang ganda ng katalang, malakas. They are <laughs> weak. The day will come. The day will come. That's why I'm also excited about the millennium. When we have our glorified body, man, <laughs> alam mo, at that time, uh, I'm just imagining. Ah, magkakakilala pa rin tayo, no? Kasi sila to, nakilala si Jesus Christ. Ate, yung mga hindi mo kayang gawin ngayon, yung mga mag-hiking, yung mga mag- hmm. I, I can, per, again, I'm just, I'm just having my uh, glorified imagination. I, I can swim from the Philippines to America. No mm-hmm. big deal. Okay? I, I, I can go hike and climb Mount Everest in the morning and then come back in the afternoon. No problem. <laughs> you see, our minds are so limited. Our minds, even right now, are perishable. Meron sa atin, our minds, nakakalimot na tayo. We are having amnesia. Alam mo, curious ako, Mike. Hmm. Curious ako. So, curious ako, paano kaya magiging relationships natin? Meaning to say, like, will you still be my brother there? Or parang pantay-pantay na tayong lahat? Or will yeah. I regard na mommy? We are no longer brothers and sisters. No relation. Not physical brothers and sisters, but we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah. There are no more children, uncles, or mm-hmm. none of those things. No more husband, no more nothing. Okay. So anyway, we are raised in power. Now, power, obviously, because that the topic is about the body, this speaks about physical power. On top of you are having, you know, you're able to transport yourself from one world to another, like Jesus did. Uh, you can eat like Jesus did. Uh, so you can eat all the lechon you want. You can eat all, you know, all this mga bawal bawal sa yung ngayon. It is raised in power. Now the term used that Paul used here today, we have a natural body. The one that will be raised is a spiritual body, not in the same sense of spirit as in what we understand na parang multo ka. Oh, spirit? Woo! No, no, no. This description alone here. It's not that spirit in the sense na para ka multo. Rather, it's spirit in the sense where it is a heavenly body. Okay? So that should excite you. That should make you look forward uh, to the return of the Lord. And at that time, no wonder, the Bible tells us that when the Lord returns and rules for a thousand years, we, the Christians who will return with him, will rule with him. Wow. Some of us will be governors. Some of us will be congressmen. Some of us will be barangay captains. Okay? Some of us will be security guards. <laughs> but because you, in any ways, we are, we are supermans. If, for the lack of word, we are supermans for a thousand years ruling with Christ with a perfect body, with a perfect mind in this world. Question, comment on that. So, Mike, Mike? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What happens to Satan and they be during those 1,000 years? They will be they... up in hell. There is no Satan, there is no demon for 1,000 years. That's why it's going to be a perfect kingdom. It's a perfect world because of a perfect government. But it doesn't mean that people are perfect. Those who are glorified are perfect. They will see Christ face to face, but the rest of the world who have physical bodies and have not died yet, then they are still subject to sin without the temptation of the devil or demons. They will be in, the state, they will be in the state of Adam and Eve. Um, you know, quote unquote, they have perfect bodies at the time, but they're still subject to sin. Mike, Mike after yes. 1,000 years, what's next? Kita. The Great White Throne. The Great White oh. Throne is where the, uh, 
uh, when when all the dead, both in Christ and not in Christ, will be called together before the quote unquote great white throne, yeah. and the Lord will be the one to separate them, and those who are not in Christ will be given the the final verdict that they their sins have not been forgiven and be thrown and locked up in hell for eternity. Then you and I, because of the new heavens and new earth, so the new earth is our permanent residence. And the Lord will come down from heaven and make his abode or make his residence with his people with the new heaven and new earth. Yes. Hmm. That is wow. eternity. And in Revelation 22 says at that time, he will wipe all the tears from our eyes. So only at that point. That there will be perfect joy at that point. Okay. So, yeah. Any more questions? A lot of people question. do this. Okay, Shai, go ahead, Shai. Question for... Um, Yung rapture po can happen anytime. At uh, any time. Hopefully it happens before our meeting ends. Yung po kasi yung there are some who believes na nasa tribulation na daw po tayo like uh, uh -huh. bird yeah. pangs na daw po to kasi marami okay. na mga ano signs na nangyayari for ano for okay. this. Then there's a problem with that shy. If if the tribulation is already now, then why are we still here? Yan nga po eh. Kaya may mga nagtatanong. By the way, let me, na ba ako? Yeah. Let, let me share what Ashay has been sharing. There are three major views as far as the rapture is concerned. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but I just want to tell you that there are those people who think in other terms as far as the rapture is concerned. There are those who think like, like I do, that the rapture will happen first that the Christians will be taken out of this world first, and then the tribulation begins. The tribulation is where the 666, the beast, and so on, will take uh, will take charge of this world. That view is called uh, uh, what do you call it? Pre. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, Pre-trib. Pre-trib. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Shai. It's called pre-trib or pre-tribulation. Pre as in P-R-E. Before the tribulation, pre-tribulation. So that is the view that I have just shared with you. There are those who will say a, a very small group of Christians, they believe in what they call mid-trib. Mid-trib is the first three and a half years where the beast is ruling on this earth, that there will be peace. Because he will bring peace to Israel and the rest of the world. So the first three and a half years is peaceful. And then on the middle portion of three and a half years, he will declare himself to be God. And the mid-tribulation teaching says that at that point is when the Christians are taken out. It has a mid-trib. The third view is post-trib. Post-trib are people who believe that the Christians will go through the tribulations. Yun ang sasabihin siya ngayon. Kaya there are Christians who say, we are living in tribulation now kasi mahirap yung buhay, may mga gera, and so on. We are going through the tribulation. And then at the peak of the tribulation, then the church is taken out. Now, that there's a problem with the post-tribulation. Ito, Shai, ito ang biggest problem with the post-tribulation. If we are taken out at the end of the seven-year tribulation, therefore, we are taken out, twink, and then immediately we go back with the Lord. Then, how will you fit in the marriage of the Lamb speak, spoke about in the book of Revelation when we are the bride of Christ married with him in heaven? So that, that is a seven-year celebration. So if you are a post believer, then you, you are thinking that we are taken out, and then immediately, we are, we are brought back. So it doesn't make sense. And how, how, how is it that the, the world at that point where the, the, the beast uh, will control the world? 
there, there's no room for that. If we, we, we were taken and then we we're coming back. So it's very different. So yeah, the, the, the one I'm sharing to you right now is the pre-trib tribulation and it is the, the majority of uh, Christians, um, what do you call this, a stand, their view is the pre-trib tribulation. Okay. Thank you po. How about naman po yung this one is a common question lagi. Pag namatay ka, diretso ka ba agad sa impyerno? Or nagwa-wonder yes. pa yung soul mo? Kagaya na pinaniniwalaan ng mga Beauty. Catholic. To be absent from the... Oh, this is what Paul said. As far as Christian is concerned, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So as soon as we die, we are with the Lord without our glorified body. The same thing with people who die who are not in the Lord. They go straight in hell. But in the future, when the rapture happens, the Christians who have died and those who are still alive, we will receive our glorified body. That is one of the rewards that we're going to get. That's why the Lord says in the book of Revelation, with me are my rewards. And uh, the first biggest reward that we're going to have is the reward of our perfect body plus the other rewards. So we are not roaming around. There is no such thing as, you know, may multo dito. Yung mga multo ni auntie, ni lola, and so on, those are all demons that are roaming around. Okay? None of them are your uncles or your auntie or your spouse. They are all in hell. Okay. Any more questions on this about death? That's why Paul says in Thessalonians, encourage each other with this word. You have to understand the doctrine of death. Anymore? Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. That's why Christians are so excited about death. If you know what death is all about. Kaya po pala talagang nakakalungkot, no? Hindi kasi once you, once you die, you really don't have any chance na masave. Kaya bakit pinag-pray ng mga taong buhay pa ang mga kaluluwa, no? Very exactly. funny. And that came from the Catholic background, uh, Shai. Because the early Christian church were not praying for the dead. It is a doctrine from the Catholic church in particular because, again, it's a business. Uh, when, you, when you offer a mass for the dead, typically you have to pay for the mass. Uh, and then especially in the dark ages, in the 13th century, 12th century, uh, yung, yung indulgences... Okay, indulgences are prayers and or uh, uh, offered by the Catholic Church for the loved ones to have a special <laughs> prayer and or mass for their loved ones who already have died. So that is why they have a special prayer, but no such thing for the Christians. There is no clue at all for the Christians. You pray for those who are left behind but not for those who have died. Because you cannot change the status of those who have died. That's why Jesus said, right? Romans 8, we, are, we have a topic in Romans 8. Ah, sorry, not Romans 8. In John chapter 8, I'm only here for a short time. And when you, are, when you look for me, you will not find me. The day will come when people who have died will finally realize, I totoo pala si Lord, I believe in you na. It's too late. No more. It's gone. Okay? So there is no mass that you can offer um, uh, you know, to, to relieve people from hell and or purgatory. There is no such thing. Especially purgatory, because that is a very common thinking uh, for most of our Filipino, you know, families and friends, because we all came from the Catholic background and we are very familiar with the purgatory doctrine of the Catholic Church. There is no such thing as purgatory. Okay? If there is any purgatory, this world is the purgatory. You make your decision now. Okay. Today, while you're still alive, this is the pre departure Correct. area. The world that we live in today is the pre departure area before eternity. Okay. Uh, ang mga bago dito, I think si Ira, Ira, you're the uh, kumbaga newest person as far as becoming a believer uh, in, in the Word of God. Uh, so, purgatory is still something that perhaps has been roaming around your head. Okay? Uh, purgatory is not in the Bible. And so it is not um, it is not a teaching of Christ. Yes, Mike. Mm -mm. Mike. Yeah. Mike. 
Good Go evening. Ahead. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, why is there different teachings about uh, yung tribulation, yung rapture? And I noted a while ago that you said in my thinking, mm -hmm. are we not yeah. supposed to to follow what's in the Bible? Why yes. is it there is different interpretation? Yes, I say in my thinking because my thinking is correct and they are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just That's saying. That, I am just saying that there are people, others who mm -hmm. who will think otherwise. Okay. That, 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 for example, the, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, you know, in their thinking, there is purgatory. But obviously, we, when we look at scriptures and you look at scriptures deeply, there is no purgatory. So, but I, I just want to be respectful of other people who have a different thinking. That that is what they believe. Um, so yeah, you know that's that's the way I see it. Now, are there Christians, true Christians, who have wrong view or a different view? Yes, yes, there yes. are. Um, I would just say, you know, I think why would the Lord permit that? Um, I think it is a it is a it's a place where we can say we can exercise love, uh, we can exercise patience. Um, the Romans 13 if you went to the book of Romans 13 there are Christians in the church in Rome who believe that you are not supposed to eat meat uh, that there are uh, you know the term used by Paul in Romans 13 there are weak believers that they have practices such as kailangan pag Sabbath, Saturday we should not work and so on and so forth but Paul says you have to understand them because they are still weak believers. And so if you are with them and if they don't believe that you should eat, you should not eat meat. So if you are with them, avoid eating meat. So, makisama ka. Mm. That's the whole point. And bring them to the knowledge of the truth. So there are a lot of things that even other true Christians have still weak doctrines. And so you have to bring them up into a level where you can point out in scriptures, um, you know, what, what the scripture says. And there are many topics about special days, about special food, ke bawal ang karne, ke bawal ang isda, ke bawal, etc. Uh, what about Christians who still believe in side of the cross? Is it possible to believe? Of course, there are a lot of Christians who believe in side of the cross. Uh, Ash Wednesday, uh, to receive kainat, a question about Christmas, about Thanksgiving, Technically, none of these are in scriptures. That is why I'm telling you, you and I continually are reformers. We continually reform your small group, your local church, other believers. You reform them to bring them back to scriptures. That is why the book that we are reading, we are still in chapter one. The pastor or the Christian as a theologian. You need to think as a theologian. You need to think as the Bible says so. You need to fill your mind with the word of God so that every time you speak, every time you encourage, every time you, you disciple, every time you uh, um, whatever, okay? when you speak, it's coming from the word of God. All right? Naubos pala yung oras natin sa ano ha? Eschatology ngayon ha? Mm -hmm. Any more questions on eschatology? And eschatology have everything to do with death. If your eschatology is wrong or is weak, then Paul, uh, do not be like the rest of the world who grieve. Okay? The mm -hmm. world has its own way of grieving because they do not understand what happens to a Christian or a person who dies. Now, if you have a family member who dies that you know who is not in Christ, you are not talagang grieving. Because you know where they are. Okay. Beth, Loy? May ano kayo? Comment? Question? No comment, Kuya Mike. No comment, Loy? Kuya Mike, that means uh, upon death, there is no judgment yet. There are three kinds of judgment. 
Three commandments. The first judgment is our salvation. If you are in Christ, the moment you repent and believe in Jesus, Romans 8, there is now no condemnation. So the judgment has been finalized. The verdict is out. You are no longer condemned. So that's the first judgment. Everybody who is not in Christ are condemned already. Past tense. It is not something in the future. If you're not in Christ, condemned ka na. You are already now sitting on the electric chair. Nakaupo ka na doon, nakatali ka na, kinalbo ka na, you are ready to be put to death. You are condemned already. So in that sense, the judgment or heaven and hell is already done. The next judgment is what you call the Bima Sit of Christ. Bima Sit is the, again, the word judgment, but the Greek word is Bima, is when the Lord returns. When he will judge only the Christians, he will judge them for the purpose of rewards. What you and I have done while you and I are on this world as a Christian. Okay? So that is what uh, Sidani will always say, the quote-unquote the promo period. What you do for the kingdom of God today will all be rewarded accordingly to what you have done. If you are a Christian today na pabanjing-banjing ka lang, okay, pa-aten-aten ka lang ng Bible study, wala ka nang ibang ginawa, sabi pa ni Paul sa Corinthians, you are like a person whose house has been burned and everything na wala lahat except for, <clears throat> except that you are... <clears throat> Para ka nasunugan, wala kang nasave except for you, you are... You are alive, pero yun lang. The same thing with the true Christian. If you have not done anything for the kingdom of God, yes, you're going to heaven, pero wala kang, wala kang, you have nothing. Okay? That's the second judgment. The bima seat of Christ. Only for the Christian. The third judgment, which is the great white throne judgment, is not the judgment whether you go to heaven or hell. It is simply the declaration of the finalization of the verdict that those who are in hell will be finally declared you are spending in hell for eternity because you are not in Christ. So there is no judgment in the sense na okay, papakinggan ko yung ano mo, yung, yung reasoning mo, not the kind of judgment. It's simply the, the reading of the result of the verdict. That's the great white throne. So kaya pag sinabing judgment, there are several kinds of judgment in scriptures. Okay, Rose? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mike? Yeah. Uh, yung third judgment, post yun sa ano, Christian at saka uh, believers and non-believers. Everybody. Uh, the book of Revelation, uh, I think it's chapter 20 yata, uh, when it says, all the dead. 20, Seven to eight. Huh? Chapter twenty, seven to eight. Okay. Pakwani, I have to mute you. Electric fan mo is hitting the microphone. Uh, it brings a lot of noise. But your question is, uh, everybody, Christians, non-Christians, will one time be brought in front of the Lord. That's why it says there uh, that in the end, everybody will confess that Jesus is Lord. Even the non-believers, the the, the not in Christ will finally declare Jesus is Lord. But it's too late for them. Too late for them. So everybody will come together before the great white throne and the people who are not in Christ, even though they declare that Jesus is Lord, their destiny, their eternity is already confirmed. They will be separated. Okay. Any more? Death? Death? Uh, Kwani, can you please, ano, uh, yung electric pan mo? I, I, yeah. I, I, am, I am about to speak. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Yung electric pan. Okay, good. Uh, do we see our loved ones who are non-believers in hell if we are in heaven? There is no more. Is it? No more. No more. It's final. At that time, it's final. Uh, it, it is not like Abraham's bosom. When Abraham uh, and uh, the, the beggar was still in communication mm -hmm. with, uh, sorry, 
uh, yeah, Abraham and the beggar was Lazarus was in communication with the rich man, right? Because that is not the fin final, final destination yet. But in eternity, when uh, the, the, the people who are not in Christ will be separated, that is final. There is no more communication, nothing, no more. Um, may additional po. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Kaya dapat po, no, na-realize ko lang po na since maraming nagsasabi, oh, see you again, magkikita pa tayo. How can you say magkikita pa tayo if, if that person will be going to hell and you are exactly. going to heaven? or exactly. So dapat, kahit na ma-offend sila kasi the word, of, the word of God is really like a double-edged sword. Ma-offend talaga sila sa truth and the truth will set us free. So kung magalit man, dati po kasi ano eh, hesitant akong mag-share sa mga ano ko, sisters ko, kasi ako na po yung pangalawa sa bunso eh. Okay. So, parang ang hirap nila talagang i-reach out. Yeah. Pero ngayon po, ano na lang ako, freely, I just open up yung exactly. lagi pong word na, ni Lord ang nilalagay exactly. ko doon with quote and quote with the, ano, with the verses. Kasi Correct. this is the only truth that I can present to them. E pag hindi mo sinabi yan, masaktan man sila sa hindi. At nagsasabi sila, righteous ka kasi ganyan. Exactly. Well, say what you want to say, yeah. but I just want to share to you the true love of Christ, the true exactly. love of God for you. Remember, hell mm -hmm. is not just a place of torment as in masakit na nasunog. Part of hell is eternal regret. I repeat, part of hell is eternal regret. Because at Amen. that point, in John chapter 8, it says they'll be looking for Jesus. Lord, sige na, nagbago na isip ko. I believe you na. It's too late. And another thing would be a regret of, bakit ko ba hindi pinakinggan si Shai? Bakit ko ba hindi si... Okay? They'll be regretting. And or, not just regret, they'll be blaming. Ay, si Shai talaga, sana kahit nagalit na lang ako, sana tinuloy niya sabihin sa akin yung gospel, bakit niya hindi sinabi sa akin? So, either eternal regret or eternal blame. They will be blaming you, you who knows the word of God, the power of God unto salvation, the gospel, and if you don't tell your friends and family. Because the gospel divides. I repeat. The gospel divides. Okay? That's why Jesus said in Matthew, don't presume that I came here to bring peace. I brought a sword. A mother against her daughter. A father against his son. That his enemies will be from his own household. The reality is this. Shy and to everybody else. Your family, your friends are not only divided politically. Meron pro BBM. Meron iba pro Pacquiao. Okay? You're not divided. The real division of all people is not political division. It is gospel division. That is the biggest division. And oftentimes, quote unquote, in the name of peace, you and I as Christians, we keep our mouth shut. Okay? Ay, wag, kasi alam ko mag divide that is okay. We can expect division because the gospel is what it is. It divides. Now, of course, you need to be smart. I mean, you need to, you know, how can I present this in a way that, you know, um, you know, maganda in the thing. So you, you, you have to be, uh, no, you have also to be smart about that. But after you present it once, twice, thrice, uh, a couple of times, and talagang ayaw maniwala, then go on to the next Go to the next. Move on. Move on. You cannot uh, spend your... And then, of course, if there's an open door in the future, then again, share the gospel. Uh, but do not get locked up. Even Jesus, when his brothers and sisters were not believing him, what did he do? He went to preach somewhere else. Remember? I mean, kaya nung pumunta yung kapatid niya sa kanya while he was preaching, sabi niya pa, but who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? He, he already forgot that physical relationship. Wala na yun. Because in the end, the only relationship that will last are the brothers and sisters in Christ. My physical brothers, my physical uncles and aunties, they're gone. They're, they're gone. So, I mean, wala na yun. So, only you and I, we, we are going to meet in heaven, or, sorry, in the new earth. Okay? In the new earth, uh, 
and we have eternity to makipag, ay, B, saan ka na galing B? Itong the past uh, uh, 20,000 years, hindi tayo nagkita. Uh, where were you? <laughs> so, so, Mike, yeah. tama ba yung sasabihin mo na alam mo yung isang tao is talaga believer? Tama ba na sabihan mo sa see you in heaven? Yes and no. Um, yes, of course. Good. If you Diba, Mike, we're not going to be in heaven. We're going to be here in the new earth reigning with Jesus correct, Christ. Correct. But because the heaven. word heaven is used in several ways. In the end, where God is, is heaven. I repeat, mm. where God is, is heaven. Since God will transfer from where he is right now, which we call heaven, and move his residence here on earth to be with his people. So technically, at that time, the earth is heaven. So again, depends on your lingo. Depends on how you use it. Okay? But uh, the technical term is the new earth. But since the new earth is where God is, then that's heaven. So going back to the question, is it right to say see mm. you in heaven? Mm. Yes and no. Yes, because obviously, if you know the person and you know yes. that most likely he is truly in Christ, then I'll say, I'll see you in mm -hmm. heaven. Yeah. The problem would be is if you use that term just for try to comfort people, lalo na pag sa mga funeral, uh, nak nakapatay na yung katawan na dyan. Oh, uh, uncle so-and-so, alam ko wala ka ngayon, but you know, in the future, I'll see you in heaven. Uh, that's totally wrong. Because you, you do not know. Okay? Yeah. Uh, but sometimes kasi, uh, we just want to be, what? We, we want to be nice sounding. We'll say, see you in heaven. B, I, I can see your mouth moving, pero we don't, we don't hear anything from you. Uh, nothing. Your microphone. There's something wrong with the microphone. So while you're trying to fix that, um, yeah, so even yung, ano, yung rest in peace, there is no such thing mm. as rest in peace. Yeah. You're, you're, not, you're not even resting and you're not at peace. <laughs> <laughs> you're either to be with the Lord, which is far better. So it's not just peace, it's joy, it's, it's, you know, it's everything, the fulfillment of your salvation, the fullness of your salvation. And or you are in hell. So there's no such thing as rest in peace. So again, it's a lingo that has been used by traditionally by people. Um, uh, kumbaga, it doesn't make sense. Scripturally, it doesn't make sense. It just makes people feel good, Mike. It's a statement that makes people feel good, but Correct. it's not Correct. the right statement. Yeah, it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. Yeah. Um, okay. And, Mike? Yes, go ahead. Uh, in follow up to Iris' ano, statement about see you in heaven, mm -mm. that is if you really believe that mm -mm. the one you are talking to mm -mm. is a true Christian believer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, I, uh, what I have in mind, what I have in mind now, can we not really lose our salvation? Of course not. Because salvation is not your work. It's the work of Christ. So it's been given to you, then how can you lose it? You cannot touch your salvation. It's the work of is Christ. It's the gift of God. It? Is there a way to lose it? No, there's no way to lose it. Romans how about, 8. How about Romans 8. There is now no condemnation, no death, no angel, no death. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Because it's about God. It's not about you. Because the, 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 the salvation of God is by grace. You don't deserve it. So how, how can you do something that you do not deserve to begin with? By your works? If you are thinking that your works is what brought you to heaven, then definitely you can lose your salvation because it is based on works. But it is not based on work. It's a gift of God by grace. Then how can you lose it? Mm -hmm. Unless you're not Christian, unless you're not elected, unless you're not chosen, of course. <laughs> you, might only have, you might only have looked like a Christian, but you are technically an apostate. John chapter po, mm -hmm. So mali po yung sinasabi na nag-backslide kasi siya kasi ah, tatang, right. kung kristyano ka, hindi ka mag-gagano. You should attend our lesson for this coming Saturday on the book of John. That is my whole topic. Okay? Uh, okay. About uh, salvation. You cannot uh, lose your salvation and it is totally the work of God and uh, 
the the people who are apostate uh, 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 they they say kasi ang tayo kasi eto problema natin we presume that people are christians and so if they they leave they they they, they depart isa ang nagbackslide but as far as scripture is concerned there is no word na backslide or even a reference to backsliding the the only thing that we see in scriptures is that if they do not last they do not uh, they are not faithful yes. in the end that they are truly not in Christ first john chapter 2 verse 19 they left us because they do not belong to us diba? Let, let's go there and first the, john and i will use so, this again this coming saturday so there is no such thing as falling away nope falling away from from the ano, from uh, salvation people can fall away from their faithfulness in attending church they can fall away from their uh you know uh, being faithful but not fall away from salvation eto verse 18 18 and 19 uh, dear children this is the last hour <laughs> by the way you see ang end times does not begin now the end times begin after the Christ return. When Christ returns here on earth, the beginning of the end has happened. This is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. And then verse 19 it is very good. They, that is the fellow believers, supposedly believers, they went out from us. Our, our lingo for today, they backslided. They went out from us. But, na, itong reasoning ni, ni Paul. But, to begin with, they did not really belong to us. Here's a keyword. They did not really. Tony, I, I will have to mute you again. Okay, yung electric pan mo, pumapasok. They did not really belong to us. Hindi talaga sila, quote a quote, hindi talaga sila member ng body of Christ. They only look like it, but they are not. Why? For, here's the reason. Because, for if they had belonged to us, kung totoong members din ng body of Christ, they would have remained with us. They would have been faithful. Okay, So true Christians will be faithful until the end, until the Lord returns or until he dies. But... Or they will, they will persevere. They will persevere. But here's the proof. But they're going... Okay, yung pag nila for their being unfaithful, their so-called backsliding, their going showed. What is this word showed? Prove, testified, witness that none of them belong to us. So again, itong word sa mga backslide, this is a word that many Christians use. You know, in, in parang sinabi na, See you in heaven. Why do you say that? To make the other people feel good. The same thing with backslide. We don't want to think that people, that person is going to hell. The reality is, it is more likely that the person who quote-unquote backslidden is on his way to hell. It is showing that he is not truly in Christ. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned Connie, that's the doctrine that I'll be focusing on this coming Saturday. The doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. The saints. In other words, the true saints, the true people of Christ, those who have been redeemed by the Lord, will persevere through ups and downs of life. And that you will know that the problems of life, you don't want to pray and say, Lord, take away my problem. As a matter of fact, I will tell you this coming week, this coming Saturday, you might even want to consider, Lord, give me more problems. As Peter mm. would say, because the problems, the persecution, the challenges of life are testing of our faith if it is genuine or not. It's in the book of James. The book of James. Okay. So remember, in, in the book of Corinthians, which I read last week, examine yourself. Test yourselves if you are truly in the faith. You know how you test yourself? How, how you can examine you can examine your faith if you are in big trouble. The bigger the problem, the bigger the, the, the persecution, the more you will know if you are truly in Christ or not. 
if you're hanging on and clinging on more uh, to the Lord when you are in trouble. Because people who are not in Christ will let go. Okay? So kung dumaan ka ng problema and you see yourself truly believing and trusting in God, that is a good confirmation. Whew, praise the Lord, I am truly in Christ. Okay? So, well, sometimes, you know, when Christians are tanong sa akin, Mike, Mike, pakipray, may, ano, may problema ako. You know, sometimes I pray verbally, Lord, uh, help him with with him or her with a problem. But back of my mind, Lord, make the problem bigger so that he or she will know if she is truly in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's uh-huh. like, you know, yeah. Peter said, the problem, uh, our faith is worth more than gold. Uh, and gold is uh, exposed to heat and to fire uh, to purify it, to make it really, you know, it will yeah, really shine. The same thing with their faith. That's the only way. Akala mo ba ang faith? Ah, talagang faithful lang kasi lagi nag ng church. Ang babaw naman ang testing mo. Kaya ang babaw masyado. Uh, true testing is problems, persecutions. That is when you will really know. Okay. That's why true Christians uh, and talang, like Connie, can you lose your salvation? No. Because true Christians, their faith are solid. The devil, the demons, try to destroy the faith of Job. Okay? You know, I'm sorry, ni Job, read the book of Job again. Did you know it was God? It was God who told the, the devil, excuse me, who told the devil, sabi na pa sa demonyo, demonyo, consider my servant Job. Pisa mo, si God na nagsabi kay de- demonyo, eh, Ito si Job. Na, 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 nasubukan mo na ito. Consider my, my, my servant Job. Masabi pa ni, ni Satan, ah, nagka-serve sa'yo yan kasi binibless mo siya eh. Uh, mayaman siya, healthy siya, uh, yung anak niya, marami siya. Masabi niya, niya, sige, do anything you want except for his life. Do anything you want. Alisin mo yung negosyo niya, sunugi mo yung, yung mga uh, kambing niya, whatever. Gawin mo na lahat. Job's faith, although there was parang uh, Lord, bakit ang nangyayari ito? His faith was solid. True faith, gift of God, could not be destroyed. Could not be destroyed. Why? It's the gift of God. You think your faith is coming from you? No. Remember the letter T of the tulip? Total depravity. You are totally dead. Even your faith is a gift of God. Nothing can, no one can snatch them from my hands. No one. Okay. So, yeah. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, that the true faith could not be destroyed. Uh, the faith of the, uh, what do you call this, the apostate, will be easily be destroyed. And, the, and the, the biggest example of a apostate faith is Judas. Okay, Judas. Ayan ang technician. Technician Danny, ayusin mo yung microphone ni, ano, ni Ruby. Walang, walang, walang sound. Nothing B. I'm sorry. Nothing comes out. Okay. Any more questions on this? Um, so, you know, you will know your true faith. So sometimes, of, of, of course, you don't really pray, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng problema. No, no, no. But whatever the Lord permits you to go through, the Lord permits. I repeat, whatever the Lord permits you to go through, financial problems, relational problems, health problems, ano pa ba? emotional problems, uh, government problems, uh, uh, gas hike problems, okay, lahat na yan. The Lord permitted it because number one, the Lord knows you can go through it. Remember Corinthians? That he doesn't uh, let anything that you cannot handle he knows you can handle it if you are truly in the Lord. Okay? If you are truly in the Lord. So, kaya, you know, um, <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Kung may problema, praise the Lord. It will only build my character. Right? It will only yun build ang, my character. Yun, uh, yun ang sinabi ni Paul. 
exactly. don't basta complain lang. For I delight in weaknesses, in persecution. Yeah. For when I am weak, oh, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Exactly. Yung strong doon, yung faith niya. Exactly. Yung faith niya, yung strong. And he delights. Mm-hmm. Wow, I delight. E tayo, I delight in ice cream, I delight in uh, chocolate cake. No, no. You delight in problems of the world. Which is, by the way, totally contradicting to the typical mindset of a Christian. And many so-called Christians go to church to get rid of problems. No. Sometimes it's the Lord who actually sent that problem. Baka sinabi sa demonyo, that- demonyo, have you considered Connie? Tubo ka mo si Connie. Sige. Yeah. That's what he did with Job. Even with Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. He was tempted by the devil. Who permitted that? Ultimately, it was God who permitted Jesus to be tempted. Hmm. That is why you and I Christians have a different view of the world. Totally different. That's why you and I can smile uh, even though we're going through issues of life. We can still, we are full of hope. People would look at us as crazy people. How can you still be doing this and doing that despite of all the issues that's going on in your life? That's why we can be a blessing even though we are in our deathbed. Okay? We are different people. Paul the says, way I see it, uh-uh. the, way I see, the way I see it, kasi Mike, Mm-mm. not unless you go through uh, trials, challenges, temptation, uh, persecution, you will never be able to say that your faith is strong. Correct. That is the, the point. That is the main point of the book of John that we'll be talking about today. Ah, this coming Saturday. How can you test your faith? How can you examine if you're truly in the faith? Papano? Yeah, of course, you love the word of God. You love to fellowship with other believers, so on and so forth. Yeah, those are nice gauges. I already have said that before. It's a good gauge to know that you are in Christ because you love the word of God, you love to fellowship. But the biggest gauge of all is if when you go through problems, persecutions, challenges, and still hang on. Because if you are the thorny soil and or the rocky soil, you will not last. Remember the thorny soil and the rocky soil? They received the word with joy. But when trouble or persecution came, they quickly fell away. But those who are in Christ, the fourth soil, the good soil, they'll go through persecutions of life, but they heard and understood and produced a crop, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So problems will only produce more crap. Okay? So that is why knowing doctrines, becoming a theologian, knowing the word of God and his promise, there is no substitute to that. No substitute. If anything goes wrong, you can say and claim and be assured all things work for the good. All things. It might look bad on me, but in the bigger plan of God, all things work for the good. COVID. It seems bad for the economy. It seems bad for your family. But in the end, it turns out to be good because there are more people who came to know the Lord. The church, yung mga pa ano ano lang, yung mga pa sulput sulput lang yung mga CEO ano tama mga CEO Christmas and Easter only they're gone okay yung mga hindi serious they're gone now Christians who are truly in the Word are more serious they are more deeply embedded in the Word of God so all things work for the good Gera let's talk about the, the history World War II because of World War II Christianity actually was spread out in the whole of Asia. Again, it seems bad, but in the end, it is good. The war in Ukraine uh, going on. Yes, it is bad. People are dying. Uh, but in the end, the true Christians will shine. Okay? Their faith will grow deeper. It will remind also for you and I as Christians today that that war can happen in your very own country. It can happen in the Philippines. 
It can happen tomorrow. What if China tries to uh, it will easily go there. Akala nyo ba, news lang yan? You and I could be the news tomorrow. So, then it will make us, wow, pwede pala ako mamatay bukas. Yes, you can. But if you're in Christ, and you understand, wow, that's okay. Pero sabi mo, eh, paano yung anak ko? Maliliit pa. Nag This is now where you'll have to understand another doctrine. The doctrine of God's providence and the doctrine of God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty is that God is in control of everything. Your children, your family, your spouse, ultimately is in God's control. They will not die or live because of you. Okay? Akala say, naku, pag nawala na ako, wala. no, no, no. Even if they'll go through problems, maybe you should thank the Lord because only when problem comes will they consider uh, the gospel. Okay? So, all things work for the good. If I die tomorrow, yeah, Mike. it is for your good if I die tomorrow. Maybe Ruby will take over the group, right? And B, ikaw mag... Uh, yeah. Sometimes that happens. Okay? Some, some, somebody has to go away for some... When, when Moses died, okay, when Moses died, it was not like, Allah, patay na. No, 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 no. Joshua took over. And more leaders, you know, rose up. Everything. That is God's sovereignty. God's providence and the word provide. He's the one who provides. He's the one who... You know, who who gives you your breath. supply? He's the one who supplies. Might even during the time of uh, Joseph when he was sold as a slave, remember? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Uh, Bill, good. Mayro ka ng sound ngayon. <laughs> Nandito technician ko eh. Okay. So yeah, even Joseph. Dumating. You see, God's providence. Keep that in mind, okay? Because I'll tell you. There is no promise that you will not have problems tomorrow. A bigger problem. I know you, all of you, all of us have problems today. But there is, no problem, pro, there is no promise that your life will be better tomorrow. Tomorrow could come a much bigger problem. But the deeper your understanding of the providence of God and the sovereignty of God, the easier you're able to face your problem. Kaya nga yung, yung kay Ruby, kay Joseph, mm -hmm. what you meant for evil, you meant it for good. Exactly. Pero at the time, Lord, when he was in prison, medyo siyempre, mag-iisip ka na, Lord, bakit? Oh. That's natural, that's normal. But mm -hmm. when you look back in time, then you will say, Lord, thank you so much na binenta ako ng mga kapatid ko, naging slave ako ni Potiphar, inaccuse ako ni Mrs. Potiphar, na rapist raw ako, na etc. Because now he can see the plan of God, the big picture. Today, if you're going to problem, you do not see exactly what the plan of God is. When we get to heaven in particular, then you will understand. Kaya pala. Kaya pala akong pinanganak Pilipino. Kaya pala akong pinanganak pobre. Kaya pala ako, etc. etc. Then you will glorify and thank God. Forever and ever. Kaya pala. Kaya. Yun na yung Romans. Romans 8.28. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Mm. Yeah, all things work all for the things. good. All mm -hmm. things. Yeah, work for the good to those who love him. See? So, again, that's God's providence. And God, uh, later on, we, we will discuss more. On, on God's providence and uh, God's sovereignty. Because these are major doctrines that um, you and I really have to understand. It will help you and I cope up with the difficulty of life here on earth. But you can expect difficulty. Uh, uh, mm. uh, Mike, yung mga panahon na ano, bago pa akong Christian, mm -hmm. parang naisip ko na parang parang mas maraming mga challenges. Yun ang inisip ko. My faith at the time was being tested. Correct. Pero pumasok sa isip ko noon na si Jesus nga, Diyos na siya. 
Mm-hmm. Bakit kailangan pa niyang dumaan lahat ng paghihirap? Ganun, no, paghihirap na yeah. hindi ko makakaya yun. Sabi mm-hmm. ko, bakit ka? At saka yung, yung kanyang disciples, sabi ko, they are closest to God, pero mm-hmm. they were not spared. They were not spared yeah. and they died a all, martyr death. Yun, yung palaging ini, in, inaano ko, sabi ko, yeah. wala, wala sa kalingkingan yung pinagdadaanan mong problema. Yeah. Parang pumapasok yan sa isip ko. Yeah. Wala sa kalingkingan. All of them died a martyred death. In the tribulation time, all of those who are in Christ, according to the book of Revelation, will be beheaded. So there is a time, the time will come, that those who will profess, I am in Christ, they are willing to die. Today, tayo, a lot of people say, I believe in Jesus. Pero kasi walang immediate consequence. That's why they are just saying, I'm Christian. Ako. Let's see. Let's see to those who are willing to die. Imagine if today, if you say you're a Christian, we will kill you. I wonder how many will still say, I still believe in Jesus. Okay? In all the examples of scriptures about the apostates, ang biggest percentage is 50%. The, the, the parable of the virgins, 10 virgins. Five of them have the Holy Spirit and five of them do not. So 50%. Sa parable of the Lord's ship, 1%. Only one is in Christ. 99 are not. In the parable of the sower, 75% are not in Christ. Only 25% are good soil. What's my point? The point, if you put at all the parables majority of those people who profess who are in Christ, the majority are not in Christ. So you can go and attend this coming Sunday and look at your local church and look at all the people. You can say at the bare minimum, 50% of all these people are still on their way to hell. Huh? Talaga? Grabe ka naman, Mike. Yes. Yes. Many of them do not even understand the gospel. They don't understand the gospel. Ask them, what's the gospel? What are you saved from? Why are you in Christ? Ah, kasi ano eh? Kasi, bakit nga ba? <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. They are like the Jews uh, at, peop- uh, at the time of Jesus. Itong, itong next verses natin. Habi pa ni Jesus, you are not in Christ. You don't belong to God. You belong to your father, the devil. Grabe yun, no? In, hindi lang insulto yun, no? I mean, talagang, you belong to your father, the devil? Inidentify ka talaga. Oo. Subo ko mo sabihin ngayon yun. Punta ka sa palpit. Sabi mo, many of you here, you belong to your father, the devil. <laughs> At saka sabihin mo rin, Mark, na you will die in your sins. Yeah. You, ang mangyayari nun, you will be stoned Babatuhin to death. Babatuhin ka. Yeah. <laughs> Babatuhin ka. Okay, mga sisters in Christ, uh, we are over time. Uh, hindi ko na pag-usapan yung gusto ko pag-usapan. But I think uh, it's still a good topic. Again, like I said, our ISI, itong meeting natin, we can jump in many different topics because we are not going to a particular book study. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. We can jump from one to another and so on. Uh, I just want you to build your um, your doctrines. Kasi tayo pa ni, ni Jesus sa mga teachers of the law you are in error because you do not know scriptures. So I don't want us to be ignorant about scripture. Error. I don't want us to be in error because number one, tayo may kinabang. And when we are solid in, the, in our foundation in the word of God, then and then only can we bless other people with the word of God. You cannot give what you do not have. I repeat, you cannot give what you do not have. Otherwise, you're only giving worldly advice. Okay? The power of God is in His words. The power of your encouragement is in the words of God. Not your, you know, pagkalambing and no, no. Sometimes to encourage people is by actually hurting their feelings. You will die in your sin. Mike, hindi naman encouragement yun. Well, in reality, it is an encouragement because it will encourage them to consider if they are truly in Christ or not. Okay. But remember, we are not Christ. So you, you have to be 
you know, um, do not think of yourself also more highly than you ought to be. Okay, because we are fellow um, people who are saved by grace, not by our works. All right, I guess um, we touched a lot about eschatology, about death, about um, other matters.